welcome back to another fun tutorial and today it's all about the mushrooms i am in love with this cute little mushroom hat it's pretty quick to work up this would make a great baby gift especially you know sometimes it's hard to find little things for the boys this is gender neutral this is for boys or girls um and i love the way this is worked up so i want to talk about a couple things going on with this hat um, as we get into this project the white parts of this hat are done as a French knot. I have a tutorial that um, walks you through how to make a French knot. It's an embroidery technique. If you do not want to do the French knot, you can also use um, the stitches just as if you're doing color work. So in, I placed the French knot where I would have done the color work in white. And I just like the depth of it totally up to you what you want to do. Um, I am using DK weight yarn for the hat, but I only had worsted weight in white for these French knots and that's totally fine. When it comes to the white, it's really just a small amount and you're using um, your yarn needle to place them onto the hat and we can walk through that together. The other thing I want to talk about before we jump into the supplies is that there is a chart um, that is downloadable for the paid version of this pattern that is colorable. So let's say you started working this hat um, and you decided, I don't want to do it in these colors, Brianna. And I don't even want to do it in the other colors you chose, Brianna. I want to do it, say, in pink, blue, and gray. That's fantastic. What you can do is you can grab a set of colored pencils and you simply color in the key first so you know which um, letter corresponds to what color and then you can color in your chart this is from the Forest Brooks beanie which is a really fun beanie to work up on my blog as well and so I've been doing this for my patterns because I think I really like the visual and the mushroom hat comes with one that you can color in as well which means you can go to your yarn stash find what colors you like grab some coloring pencils or crayons print this colorable chart and then you can fill it in it makes it so much easier to work from a chart if your eyes are seeing the color that you're working with it's a lot simpler to do so in the paid version of this pattern or in the uh, fireside crochet ebook and course that this is also available in there as a bonus you can get that printable version which i find very useful when it comes to doing color work so today what you will need is a size four millimeter G hook. This will be using for the brim of the hat. And then the rest of the hat will be made in a five. That is not a five, rather wrong supply. A five millimeter crochet hook. I have crochet hooks everywhere around this office um, for the body of this hat. So you'll need a size G and H, four millimeter, five millimeter hook for this hat. You'll also want a tapestry needle to weave in those ends and scissors to fasten off. The colors I'll be using today in the Swish DK, which this way, this, this yarn is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Um, it's 100% fine wash, fine superwash merino wool, which means you can wash this yarn. So that's a great thing when we're talking about making a hat for kids or for ourselves, that it is easier to clean being a superwash. The colors I'm choosing today are the Rainforest Heather, the Copper the nutmeg heather and then I will be doing these the white for the dots on the mushroom mixing it up just a little bit but I'm still making it to correspond to this hat here where um, this was I believe pumpkin and then I have the brown in here um, I'm using the same um, nutmeg heather as the base but I just wanted to switch up a couple of the colors to make it coordinating but not matchy matchy I just thought it'd be fun but I'll tell you I am tempted after coloring in some charts today to, to do one in these colors just because it's so much fun you can coordinate to whatever outfit you want so go ahead and grab your supplies and let's get started now today on camera I will be creating the small adult or teen size hat for this um, mushroom hat pattern the other sizes are in the pattern on my blog or for the paid versions downloadable as well. But on camera, I'll be showing you stitch counts for the small adult or teen style hat. It's the size um, I prefer to wear. Um, maybe I have a small head. My kids have large heads. I would honestly make them a size large adult. Um, so it just depends on what size your head is. You can measure and I have the measurements and schematic in the pattern as well. So what we will do, we will start with our four millimeter hook and set our five millimeter hook aside for now. This will only be used for the ribbing of the hat, but this is what will make it so that it fits snugly. And we are doing a fold up brim for this hat. Now, if you did not want to do a fold up brim, you can simply chain less. So this one, see how long the brim is when it's unfolded? If you don't want to fold it up, do about half the stitches and then and then wear it. You won't need to, to worry about anything else. 
Um, so for this hat, though, I'm going to show it as a fold up brim for the small adult size, which means we are going to start by chaining 21 stitches. Now, after chaining 21 stitches, we are simply going to tighten down that last chain and starting in the second chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet across. If you need to use a stitch marker for the first stitch of the row, feel free to keep track of that. But we will be single crocheting a total of 20 stitches for this first row. Now after single crocheting 20 stitches for row one, we are going to turn and do row two. And row two is what we will be repeating over and over to work that ribbing in rows. So what I will do is I will start by chaining one and now we will only be working in the back loops only for the remaining of the ribbing. So working in the back loop only, we will single crochet in each stitch across. So I'll single crochet in the back loop only for 20 stitches. And then I will turn and I will just keep repeating this row over and over. And that's going to give us our ribbing. And for this size um, that I'm doing on camera, the small adult, we will do this until we have a total of 72 rows. So now I'm going to fast forward here as if I'm on a baking show and I just put a casserole in the oven and then two seconds later I pulled the casserole out, all cooked. So this is what it will look like once you have done 72 rows for the hat. It's quite stretchy. You don't want to stretch it out. Leave it as is as you're working it. Um, so it's just one big long rectangle of single crochet in the back loop only and this makes the bottom band. Now at this point, this is where we want to join this band together. So what I will do is I will fold these sides in and we're going to join the current row we're working with the first row that we started. So I've chained one and I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop only and then I'm going to go to the very first stitch of my very first row. So I'm just grabbing that loop and then we will yarn over and slip stitch everything together. So once again, that's insert your hook into the back loop only of your current row, grab the loop from the very first row, yarn over and pull through all of the loops, slip stitching that together. Now we will do that for all 20 stitches down this ribbing and that will give us a beautiful join and then we'll start working in the round. So slip stitch all those together and then we'll go on to working in the round. Now that we have slip stitched the ribbing together, we're ready to turn our hat and we're going to start working in the round. I'm gonna keep this color because we're going to just go right into working in the round, but we do have a setup round where we are going to remove our size G hook. We wanna set that aside. And now the rest of the hat will be created with a five millimeter H hook. So I'm going to start with that hook. Now we're going to be working around the top of this hat in the round, grab a stitch marker because it is really important to keep track of your stitches when we're not joining. So this is worked continuously, which means we're not joining at the end of the round. We're just going right back into that first stitch. So a stitch marker can be really, really helpful when it comes to these steps. We are going to do a slip stitch into each row. So one slip stitch per row all the way around the top of this hat. So I'll start by making one slip stitch along the edge of the row and I'm going to mark it. That way it just makes it easier. I know where I started. I know when I'm back at the beginning and then I'm going to slip stitch again into the next row and then one slip stitch per row, not too tight, all the way around. This will end up being however many stitches will be however many rows you had on the ribbing. So for this size, we will be slip stitching 72 stitches around and then come on back. Now we're going to be working from the color work. You can follow the written instructions or the chart for this next section, honestly, all the way to the end. So we are already with this size of hat, we are bringing in another color. So this was my color A and now I'm ready to bring in my color B. And we're gonna start with the first stitch of the round. I'm gonna move this stitch marker and our first stitch color is still with the color A. And I'm going to be working this very first round into the back loops only. The reason why is I really like the straight line this creates. You can kind of see it on this hat. It creates like a nice line definition there between the ribbing and the hat. If you don't want to work it in the back loop only, that's totally fine. 
So I'm going to start by working a split single crochet in the back loop only. And yes, I say split single crochet for a reason. While these are worked like single crochet stitches, the biggest difference between a split single crochet and a regular single crochet is this loop right here. This is the adjustment we have to make in order to make the stitch comfortable for us to work into and easily without frustration. So this is called the magic loop. When you're working a split single crochet stitch, you want to pull that up a bit higher, at least matching the first loop on the hook before you yarn over and finish the stitch. This will create the V on the front to be a little bit more roomy and easier to work into. You should not have to fight with the stitch. Now the first stitch of the round is in this color A, but in order to change colors, because my very next color is with color B, before I finish my first stitch, whenever you're changing colors, if your next color is different, on the previous stitch you'll want to yarn over and then pull through with your new color to finish that first stitch. See, we've got that V on the front there, we've got our new color ready to go, and then our next stitch is with our new color. We're going to work that into the back loop only as well and do a split single crochet for one. All the remaining stitches on this pattern will be in split single crochets. That's that knit look. So for the remaining of this pattern, we will be working in split single crochets. So we wanna make sure to give each stitch enough space. Now I've done my second stitch and I'm going right back to my color A. So I'm gonna yarn over and finish that stitch with my next color. This round, we're starting off by working every other stitch with a different color. I'm gonna pull my tail ends out of the way here so they're not like getting tangled in anything. And the way I like to work two colors, and this would take some practice, is to carry both yarns, um, hold them both on my left hand. So I'm gonna go into my next stitch where I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull up that loop and I'm gonna make sure I pull up that loop a bit higher than I normally would for a regular single crochet because these will be split single crochets. Then I'm gonna yarn over with my new color to finish that stitch. And then I'm gonna work that stitch with the color B, finish it off with the color A, work the next stitch with the color A, finish it off with the color B. So I'm simply going back and forth with this round so every other stitch is a different color between color A and B. So work round one, um, switching colors, and then come back for round two. And now for round two, which round two is a bit easier because we can go ahead and let go of our color B. We're not gonna cut it or fasten it off because we'll be using it throughout the whole hat. So we can let it go and let it sit while round two, we're simply just working with our color A for the entire round. I'm gonna do this first stitch here and then mark it. That way I know when I get back to the beginning. And we're split single crocheting in each stitch around with the color A. But I want you to notice something. As I work the split single crochet, it's working up as easily for me as any other single crochet stitch. That's because I'm giving it more space with that, so the front V, it has a space for us to get into. Because when we work the split single crochet, we're working right down the center of that V on the front. And on the back, we're coming out, out an upside down V. And then we wanna pull up this loop to be a bit higher and then yarn over. That's the adjustment we need to make for this stitch. Now, if you're someone who doesn't work your hook parallel to your crochet, that's always something to pay attention to. Is your hook like this, you're not pulling up that second loop long enough for it to be easy to get into the next time. Because if I did this, even if I'm pulling up a little, that loop is not gonna be as high as were my hook parallel. Now, if you really struggle with this, you could actually use the angles to your advantage and you can insert your hook, pull up the loop, and if your hook happens to be angled a little bit down, it's gonna naturally pull up that magic loop, golden loop, I guess is what they call it for you. So that golden loop, second loop on the hook, is the, the most thing that you wanna master when it comes to split single crochet. Once you've done that, then working into these split single crochet stitches is quite simple because you can get into that V for each of the stitches. So we're going to work the round two, just in color A, the split single crochets, all the way around. Now I have worked through round six because it was using the same um, repeats as round one and two. What I really wanna get to is how to carry your yarn on the back of the work when we're working more than every other stitch. Because 
while working every other stitch, it works out nice. But on this next round, we're going to talk about what happens if you're working across seven stitches, but then in an eighth stitch, you have a different color. So we want to make sure that we're carrying floats on the back that look really nice and aren't going to change the shape of the hat and allow the hat to still stretch and fit on our heads. So for round six, we'll be starting the first four stitches with this heather color. We will not need our color A for this round, but I am a person who does not like to weave in a lot of ends, and I know I need this about five more rounds later, so what I'll do is I'll leave it, and then I'll also, after a couple of rounds, I'll grab this yarn and just carry, you know have it follow me up some rounds so that when I'm ready to use it again, it's in place, and I'll show you how to lock yarn in place here. So I'm going to just throw aside my color A, I've got my color B, and then we are going to be bringing in our color C for this round. So we'll have a few colors attached now. So for this round, I'm going to move my stitch marker, and we're going to start by working the first four stitches with this color B. I'm going to place that stitch marker back, and the first four stitches in this round are with color B, and there's no need to carry anything right now. Because now we're going to add a yarn, our color C will be this next stitch. So for this next stitch, we're going to add the color C, and then we're going to go back to our color A for three to complete this repeat. So here's what happens when we're carrying yarn. So this is the repeat all the way around for this round. You'll repeat this again and again and again. We're doing four in B, one in C, and four and three in B. Now, the next time we're going to be using this, it will be quite a long stretch. So what we will do, because we'll be working seven stitches in a row with this color B, is when I go to work a stitch and and I don't like to work more than three stitches at a time without grabbing my yarn that's not being used, floating on the back. So I'm going to take the yarn, my color C, that's not being used, and I'm going to lay it over my hook. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color that I'm working with the color that I'm carrying laying over my hook, and then I'll make this stitch with the working color. And that locks it in on the back. It grabs that yarn so that this float isn't too long. When it's too long, it can catch on earrings a lot easier or fingers or anything like that. And if we also have really long floats, it can change the shape of our hat by pulling it too tight in certain areas, and that's not good either. So when I'm working a lot of stitches in a row, I'll simply grab and trap that yarn every so often. I'm going to show you another one here by just laying the yarn I'm carrying over the hook before I complete the next stitch. And it's wrapping that yarn into that stitch on the back. We don't notice it, we don't see it, but what it does is it carries nice floats along the back. And that way, when we are ready, when we've worked the amount of stitches we need to, and we're ready to switch colors again, it's right here, ready to work again, and we don't have an extremely long float on the back. And then we can work our stitch, and then we're going back to the color B, and we'll work that all the way around. So that's what we will need to do on any round where you are caring for more than three stitches, three or more stitches. You'll want to, every few stitches, grab your yarn along the back so that we don't have too long of floats and it creates a really nice, nice hat. Floats are a beautiful thing on the back when they're done right. They're not going to disrupt the, the fit, the size of the hat, or be an issue to grab things like earrings, fingers, whatever it may be that we're wearing. So for the, the remaining of this pattern, I'm going to let you do the color work until we get to the decreasing part. So you're either just working from the chart or um, from the written pattern to work up this color work. I will note, like I said in the intro, that on the some certain rounds when we're working the mushroom, we will want to decide if we want to work these white dots as stitches, which we can. The written pattern right now has it written in as stitches, or if you want to come back later, and do these French knots, you're just simply going to work them with the same color as the mushroom and we'll place the French knots on the stitches that were marked on the chart that are marked for color D. Um, for this hat, I am going to do the French knot. I just think it's super cute, so I wanna show you that again. So I'll be working my mushrooms in a solid color and then I'll come back and do my French knots. 
So continue to work out this pattern until we get to the decreasing section. So the first decrease you see, I'll come back and I'll work that and show you how to start decreasing the top of this hat. Now it's time for us to be doing some decreasing. So I'm back to show you how to do that. And when it comes to our color A, we're not gonna be using it for a few rounds here. If you wanna get rid of it, you can fasten it off or you can just continue to work it up because we will be using it one more time for some, some color work. So for round 20, we're going to start with our color B. And we're going to be decreasing in this very first stitch. Now on the chart, you'll see that there is a slash, which means like we're decreasing the first two stitches together of this round. So I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker and we are going to split single crochet two together. And how we do this is we are going to enter our first split single crochet stitch right through the center there. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now go into the next stitch in the center. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we'll yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook, placing our stitch marker there. Now I want to know when I'm working into the stitch on the next round, I will actually work into both of these front V stitches here together. So when I'm working on the next round, I'll go through right through the center of both of those. And that's how I'll work that stitch on the next round. So what we will be doing though, is after our very first stitch, I'm gonna back this up a little. So that's how you do a split single crochet two together. But when we're changing colors, cause we wanna to change to our color C, we're going to grab our color C and finish this decrease with our color C. That way we're set up with this new color to work our next stitch, which will be in the color C. Then we're gonna go back to our color A. We're gonna work that for three stitches. And then we're gonna be switching right back to our color C. And this is just creating some cute dots on the top of this hat. And then we'll go back to the color A for one. And then we're going to be doing a decrease again. So this was our repeat here, but I wanna show you how to do that decrease one more time. So we're gonna insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert and make sure to pull it up. Insert our hook into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then because we're switching colors here for our repeat, I'm going to complete this split single crochet two together with my new color. And then I'm set up to keep working in that repeat. So that's how we're going to decrease all the way around. So the split single crochet decrease is very similar to a regular single crochet decrease. It's just where we're entering it and how we're working it. So now that you know how to decrease and do that color work, you can finish off decreasing the top of this hat and then come on back. So if you did not do the color work in the mushrooms and you just kept this plain like I have on mine, you have the option if you would like to come back and do some French knots, which are dots that are a little bit more raised than just doing the color work. As you can see, all of these are French knots and I'm going to show you how to do that. So for this, what I like to do is I'll get a starting point here and it's easy if you kind of flip this hat inside out and look, you can also see how the color work looks on the inside. So I'm gonna find one of these mushrooms on the inside and I'm gonna weave in my end to secure it. And that way I can start off. I'm not gonna leave a tail to come back in and weave later. We're gonna start by weaving in our tail end. And I am using a lighter color here. Um, you don't have to, you can use anything you want for the dots, but of course I really kind of liked going with this white for the dots. And if you don't have any DK weight or anything, you can use any any really worsted weight, anything will work great for this because it's not going to affect our gauge. So what we want to do is we want to come up in the same spots as if we were doing a stitch. So, you know, if we were doing the color work stitch, it would be on this stitch. So we're going to bring our tapestry needle with our yarn up that spot. And then we're going to take our needle. We're going to hold it kind of close to this and we're going to go around this needle three times. So now we've wrapped around our needle three times. We're going to go right back down and I like to catch some other yarn as I go back down. So I'm catching just a strand of yarn so I'm not exactly going right back down the exact same spot. That way it won't pull that knot out all the way through. And then I'm simply going to pull my needle down and that creates the French knot. And then you'll simply do that in every spot all the way across. So it's a little bit of work to do a little bit of hand embroidery, but I think it adds a nice 
special touch to this. So I've come up where I want to do my next dot. I'm going to wrap my yarn around. And then I'm going to go back down into my hat. But once again, we're going to catch just a little bit of yarn. So we're not going to go in the exact same spot, but just catch some of that background yarn to go back down so it's not in the exact spot where we came up. And then pull the end of our yarn down. And we have another French knot. So just work that all the way around on your mushrooms to add that extra nice detail. Now for this cute little mushroom hat, I had a unique opportunity present itself to show you what to do if you happen to do a stitch in the wrong place and you don't notice that and you don't want to frog back, what you can do after you're done with your hat to fix the stitch that you may have put in the wrong place. And that's called working a duplicate stitch. Let me show you how. Now when I did my first design of this hat, I had a stitch go up farther on each side right here. But as you can see, the stitch is still here on this hat. It looks like an anchor. And when I asked a few people whether they preferred seeing these stitches on the side come up or not, they said no. But instead of starting all the way over and making a new hat, I can actually fix this hat by using what's called a duplicate stitch. If you take your yarn needle and you come up right at the base of the stitch. So right at the bottom of the V, you're going to come up from inside the hat to the bottom part of the V. Then we're going to insert our needle looping around the stitch above the stitch we want to fix like so. Then we'll pull it all the way through and not too tight. You want it to look nice. And then we'll go right back down to where we came up on that stitch and pull that through the hat. What this does is it creates like a mock knit look stitch on top of it, also called a duplicate stitch, that hides the stitch underneath if you want to do a little bit of color correcting. Say you did something wrong, maybe you didn't do the top stitch of your mushroom and you don't want to remake it or undo it or you already woven your in your ends and it's too hard to go back. You can use the duplicate stitch to easily fix certain things on a hat or a sweater where you may have made a mistake and it's really bothering you. So that is one way to fix your color work. Now, once you get to the top of your hat here, you'll fasten off and weave through the final stitches of the round. And then sometimes I like to weave in the round below as well to close any gaps or holes that you may see on the top. And then you'll simply hide your tail ends by weaving them all in. I have not done that yet, but I also want to show you the inside of this hat. So I definitely need to weave in my end still, but you can see this is how the pretty color work. I know it looks messy, but it's actually quite beautiful on the inside. This is what the inside of your hat will look like when you're carrying all that yarn. Um, and this one's probably too long of a float here. I didn't catch that one. I should have, but the rest of them are quite nice. And that's why it's important, important to catch your yarn so that it is um, nice and clean on the inside as well. I really hope you enjoy this pattern. I've done it in two different ways. Um, on these ones, I didn't do such a long cuff. I didn't do the fold up cuff like I did on these other sizes. I simply did less than half of the stitches or about half the stitches for the ribbing in rows in the same way, just using less stitches so that it's not a fold over cuff. Um, and I did some different colors too. So it's a lot of fun. I have some color inspiration for these hats. Feel free to use whatever colors you like best. And then hit that subscribe button and come back for some more fun projects soon.